margin of error. And margin of error basically is a formula and um, you just plug the numbers into the formula. So basically what the margin of error is, if you're gonna do a study, you wanna have a certain number of people in the study. So if you only had two people in the study, if, you know, it's gonna be very biased because like it's gonna end up being like 50%. So the more people you have, the smaller the margin of error. And what the margin of error means is the information that you get, um, how truthful is it? Okay, so um, it comes out as, the margin of error comes out as a percentage. So a survey of the sample population gathers information from a few people, and the results are used to reflect the opinions of a larger population. The reason that researchers and pollsters use sample population is that it is cheaper and easier to poll a few people rather than everybody. One key to successful surveys of sample populations is to find the approximate size for the sample that will give accurate results without spending too much money or time. So that's part of the reasoning behind that. So it says, suppose that 900 American teens were surveyed about their favorite ski category of the 2002 Winter Olympics in Park City, Utah. Ski jumping was the favorite for 20% of those surveyed. This result can be used to predict how many of the 31 million American teens favored ski jumping. To determine how accurately the results of, the sur of surveying 900 American teens truly re reflects the results of surveying all 31 million American teens, a margin of error should be given. When pollsters report the margin of error for their surveys, they are stating their confidence mathematically in the data they have collected. The margin of error can be calculated by using this formula, 1 over the square root of n, where n is the number in size in a sample size. So there were how many people there are in a sample. Now, you may see different margin of error formulas, but they would probably give them to you if they're on your exam. And so you just need to make sure that you plug the numbers into the correct spot, okay? So for the example above, the margin of error would be 1 divided by the square root of 900 because there were 900 people in the sample and the square root of 900 is 30. And so if you do 1 divided by 30, you get 0 0.03. Now, that is written as a decimal. I mean, yeah, that is written as a decimal. So what you have to do is you have to go in and change it to a percent. So we talked about this in some of the other units. And when you change a percent to a de or the decimal to a percent, you've got to move your decimal two spaces. So that's the exact same thing that we're going to do here. Oh my goodness. I can't go back. So for this one, it came out as 0 0.03, but we want to change it to a percent. So we take that decimal, move it two places. So that gives us 3%. But notice how it says plus or minus 3. So that basically means that it's kind of got an interval, so it's a margin of error. So it could be like 3% above or 3% below, okay? So that's what the plus or minus means. But when you put the answer, you should definitely put the plus or minus. Now we're going to do some examples because sometimes you're going to be finding like different things. So it says find the margin of error for a survey of 100 American teens. So we're going to use the formula, which is 1 over the square root of n, and this is for the margin of error. I'm just going to use those parentheses. So that's going to be 1 over the square root of 100, because I just put the 100 in. So that is going to be 1 over 10. If I change that to a decimal, it's 0.1. And if I change that to a percent, it's 10%. And remember, we also need to have plus or minus. So it says compare the margin of error to the one of 900. So 900 was the one that we did before, and the 900 was plus or minus 3%. So the smaller the percentage is, the better the information is. So since they use 900, 900 is going to give us a more accurate, it's only going to have a margin of error of plus or minus 3%, 
And if we used 100, which is quite a few less, we're going to get more of a difference in what it would be if they surveyed everybody. So then it says find the margin of error for survey of 9,000. Now, if you did 9,000, hopefully you already realize 9,000 is going to be less than 3% because 9,000 is quite a big group. So we're going to take 1 divided by, I'm putting this in my calculator, 1 divided by the square root of 9,000. And when you're doing this, just write what you're putting in. Just put this. Then after you put that, just put it as a decimal. So it's going to be 0 0.0105. And then I'm going to change that to a percent. So when I change that to a percent, it's going to be 1.05%. Actually, we're going to change, write it to the nearest tenth. So it's going to be 1.1%. 1 .1 and you got to make sure you put plus or minus. So then we're going to do 90,000. So when we do 90,000, hopefully you realize that 90,000 is going to be smaller than 1%. So how are we going to write it if it's smaller than 1%? So we're going to get 1 divided by the square root of 90,000. And so when we put that in, we get 0 .003 with a repeating 3. So that's going to come out to be plus or minus. We're going to move that decimal sp two spaces. It's going to be 0.3%, which is less than 1%. So it says draw a conclusion about the mar margin of error based on the size of the sample. What do you think is so? I've just basically been saying it the whole time. The larger the number of people are in your study, the smaller amount of error that you're going to get. So if you had 31 million, I think is what they said, but if you did all of the per people, then um, you would get like a really, really small margin of error because you're actually polling the entire population. If you want to cut your margin of error in half, what would you have to do with the sample size? Why? Now, I'm not going to ask you a whole lot of that stuff, but if you wanted to cut it in half, see we had 10%. If we wanted to cut it to 5%, um, we'd probably double that. We're not going to do that much, though. So what if you wanted your margin of error to be 5%? So here we have 10%. So if we wanted it to be 5%, what we would have to do is we would have to take that same formula. So we have the margin of error is equal to 1 over square root of n. Now, in this particular question, we're trying to find out what our n is. So when we do that, we've got to fill in what we, what we know, okay? And we don't know our n. But we do know the margin of error that we're trying to get. And the margin of error that we're trying to get is going to be 5%. So remember, if it's 5%, it's going to be 0 0.05 is equal to 1 over the square root of n. Now, this kind of looks like some, things, some formulas that we've done before. I'm going to come to the side over here so I can show what I'm doing. 1 over the square root of n. We want to solve for the square root of n, so what we want to do is get it out of the denominator. So if we get it out of the denominator, we're going to multiply both sides by the square root of n. So if we multiply both, square, both sides by the square root of n, those cancel. So we have 0 0.05 square root of n is equal to 1. Well, that is a square root. So if you remember back in that little unit, we want to get the square root by itself. So we do divide by 0 0.05, divide by 0 0.05. So we have the square root of n is equal to 1 over 0 0.05. Now, we can put that into our calculator. So we have 1 divided by 0 0.05. And that's going to give me 20. Now, we're not done yet because we have the square root of n is equal to 20. We want to get that n outside, so we're going to have to square both sides. So that's going to give me n is equal to 400. So if we go up here, if we have 100, we're going to have 10%. And if we have 400, we're going to have 5%. So 
You could say if you wanted to uh, half the margin of error, in that particular case, you would have to quadruple it. Now, this is another one. Find the sample size needed to create a margin of error of 2%. We're going to do very, very similar. I'm going to do it in red so we can tell the difference. But, oh, I mean, yeah. So, we're going to take that same formula. We got margin of error is equal to 1 over the square root of n. We know the margin of error is 2%. We've got to change that to a decimal. So we're going to have 0 0.02 equals 1 over the square root of n. I'm going to multiply both sides by the square root of n. And so on this side I have 0 0.02 square root of n is equal to, on this side it cancels, it's equal to 1. So I want to get that square root of n by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by 0.02. So when I do that, I get 1 divided by 0.02, and that's going to give me 50. Not quite done yet, because I need to square this. So when I square that, I'm going to get that n is equal to 2,500. So that's the number of people that I would have to have in a study in order to get a 2%. Now, there are different uh, ways that you can go about this. I kind of like to kind of show the whole thing. But what you can also do is you can come out with a different little formula so that, oops, as you're doing it, um, when you come up to here at this point, basically, you are just taking uh, 1 over the margin of error as a decimal, and then you're squaring it. So that is equal to 1 over the margin of error as a decimal, and then n is going to be 1 over the margin of error squared. Some people kind of just try to like shortcut it and do it that way, which is fine. It's just basically taking that formula and solving it for, um, for n.